Greetings, family. This is Bomani Tamba, and welcome to our Africa for the Africans conference call for May 15th, 2022. And uh, we're here to talk about all the preparation details to help you and get you clear and organized for any of the selected Journey of a Lifetime coming up between this year and uh, next year. So, and then what I have is an email that I sent out and also have uh, social links that I'll go through. And then from there on, open things up for our questions. Uh, but everything is basically just generalized more than anything else since we have six countries that we travel into. Uh, all of our next year uh, total. And uh, this year we're just doing Ghana and Tanzania. Right. So family, the first journey that we have coming up is our Ghana May 24th to June 5th journey coming up. And that is a full journey to Ghana. And right now we all have our tickets and we have our accommodations in place. And the main thing from here on is to make sure that everyone is clear about preparation and entry requirement and things like this. Uh, you wanna make sure that uh, all of your papers are organized and in place. And everything that we're talking about on this journey, um, uh, regardless of whatever journey you're going on, it's all preparation. So if your journey is further out, it just give you more details and more time to process everything. But right now we all have our visas and we all have all the things we need to have in place so we can start our journey in Ghana on Africa Day, May 25th. And that journey to Ghana is 10 days. We have four days in Accra, three days in Cape Coast, Elmina, and three days in Kamasi. And then some of us stay longer. So what I'm always uh, recommending for those of us that's traveling in the future, if you look to stay longer, uh, you can just stay longer. The tour dates is what we have for the actual tour. We can only do a tour so long. So the shortest tour is a uh, eight days and that's uh, sending on again, and that'll be changed to nine days. I just have to change it. So you end up having tours between nine days are uh, the shortest and 10 days the longest. Uh, so you can just add an extra week and you can stay in that country or you can go to a different part or different parts of that country or go to different countries it, it's itself. So that's what we have. Like example, um, those of us that stay back in Ghana, if you decide that you just wanted to go to Benin, you can just take a flight from Ghana to Benin you know, naturally you have to have your other things in place like visas and things like that. Uh, but that's what I'm talking about. Then you just come back to Ghana and then, you know, so you get on your flight, whether you have a direct flight on United or on Delta Airlines. So those are the sequence that we have just to encourage more people to travel, more people to open their minds up to these journeys or in general, to get more people to get more for the investment. Uh, so the itinerary is going to be a full itinerary. When I talk about 10 days in the country, you're talking about literally you have a schedule for those 10 days. So I always want everyone to take their time and read through the itineraries and uh, read through the overview so you can be clear on the numbers, what's included and what's not included. Uh, for the most part, what we have is a journey to where the only thing that's not included is your lunch and your uh, $50 per person group tips. And then anything that you just spend on nightlife or you just shopping and things like that. And then the other thing is just uh, whatever you decide to, um, you know, decide to you know, spend extra as far as um, trying to, let me see, there's something on my mind. I'm trying to just uh, add to that uh, equation and it's uh, not uh, coming to mind. Uh, yes, uh, some countries you have visas, so that's another thing too. The best we can do is just uh, assist you with the visa and work you through the process as best as possible. All of the tour files that the country that's required visa, you know, those files are there, but also have a special visa email with attachments and full details on how to process on filling out the application and then have your background going through it. So all the countries that we have, um, with the exception of South Africa and Senegal, you need a visa. So you need a visa visa for Ghana, the Gambia, Tanzania, and also Liberia. Yeah. And all the visa requirements are different from country to country, uh, but I've made sure that you know, we'll put all the things in place. So that's one of the main things you wanna look at uh, beyond us, the overview, the general terms, 
and the itinerary is to make sure that uh, you're clear about those process. And then if you have visas or if, excuse me, if you have passports from other countries, then you have to see if you need to get a visa in Tanzania. Uh, most of what I have generalized and set for since we're based here in America is the requirements for those with US passports. And you know, so this may take us a little basic research for you to do that. And the simplest thing to do to see if you need a visa for Tanzania or any of the countries that we have on that itinerary is by going to the relative embassy. Uh, so these are things that you want to do when you travel in general to do some of your own legwork is to look up details on embassy and things like that to make yourself prepared. But in general, our goal is just to make sure that we have as much put together for you as possible. And the, one of the most important thing is travel advisory and entrance requirement. As things change between what country you need to have a vaccination card or you need to have a COVID-19 test and those things, it just literally just varies. So the ideal thing is when you're traveling to make sure that you even reach out and be clear about the requirements for the airlines and also the requirements to enter the country, you know, because that's what you're dealing with now in this world you're living in. You're, you have different requirements for, because you, know, you have planes, you have, you're leaving from one country to the next and how things work leaving one country and then going back in and things like that. So those are things that we talked about literally uh, yesterday on a private conference call for our group that's leaving uh, May 24th and tour starts May 25th. And, and that's that way, that way we can literally just get into a conversation to where we just talk about the direct situations as far as requirements and things like that on that call. So more so what I'm here to do is just talk about general information, but I just wanted to, to mention to everybody that literally when you're about to leave or even on the, the WhatsApp group page, even way before you decide to leave, you know, we have this information and then when I'm talking to you, I'm getting you prepared for those things also. So right now, all of us are prepared and uh, ready to go to share with you some of the things that um, we have to uh, process. So one of the key things on the uh, website to get you prepared for, especially for those of us that are leaving, is once you're on our website, Africa for the Africans.org, uh, you have a preparation and reminder list. And what I'll do is I'll just start uh, screen sharing so I could just be more interactive. So let me uh, show you where that information is. All right, perfect. Uh, so once you're on the website, uh, MP3 play on the left, and then you have slideshow, previous tours, previous activities, us um, with our group, us socializing, many different uh, aspects of just enjoying Africa. And so since we're talking about the uh, Ghana major, and I can also look right here on the front page and just click on the relative journey. And so it's called departure and reminder list for Ghana tour May 2022. So that's a list of everything that you would need to you know, be clear on and be prepared for. All right, so it's a long list, so I'm not gonna go through the list. Just wanted to show it for detail and documentation. Uh, so it starts off with just the, the link that tells you this is the link for all of the tour information and just to read through it. Because literally that's what you have to do to just be, be clear on everything, this to read through information. And it seemed like we're in a day and age where sometimes, you know, where people now are not reading as much, but if you're gonna spend this kind of money to travel and things like that, um, you definitely wanna read through this. And, you know, the good thing is that these are information that you have upfront and available to you before you travel, that way you can just make a profound decision and you can also compare what we're doing to whatever you decide to do, whether it's you plan your own journey or whether you decide to travel with someone else. But this is what we specialize in, a decade and a half of just uh, preparation and having things organized to where you can just enjoy the journey of a lifetime there in Africa and put things in place for the future. Yeah, so key things are in there as far as uh, what to pack, what to bring, uh, preparation details for your, you know, for your airlines, for your bags, and things like that, and also recommending that you know you bring in different uh, clothing as far as like all whites, um, 
combination of colors, red, black, green, and gold. Uh, these are all based on programs that we have uh, you know, for what we call Ancestor Day or this uh, our cultural days where we just um, reconnect into our stolen African ancestors, uh, locations of, of uh, African uh, Holocaust and, and things like that, or, or cultural celebration or business conference and naming ceremonies. So you have a list of different uh, ideas of clothes to bring and what to pack and necessary medicine, uh, equipment and things like that. So it's a list that um, I've been adding to over the last, uh, you know, since I've been traveling to, to Africa and just keep on adding to it and modify the list. So it's very detailed and very helpful. Talk about meet, meet up points and things like that. So that is one of the articles that I've created for every country that we have on the list, all six countries and all the countries even the ones we don't have, I've created that. And that's been something that we just take our time and uh, go through and just ask everybody just to look through it. And this, by the time you look through it, you have all your things in order to where you're ready to go and you're just a lot more prepared. All right, so the website is uh, filled with a whole lot of information. And one of the main things on there uh, to the main menu is uh, the tour books. Now the tour books are the program for the, the tour itself, have your itinerary and our, our introduction and this all the need to know where we're gonna go and things like that. So once you click on our link, you'll see this a list of the previous tour books and things like that. Uh, so we always have them in digital forms and for the most part, uh, all the countries that we travel into, uh, we're printing the books. Uh, I have to figure out a new way to this, either modify the Ghana book, it's too big to where we have to just find a different ways to print it. But, uh, some journeys uh, depends on the situation. We may print books, we just may or may just have complete digital version. It just all depends. Ourselves, right, so we talking about uh, Ghana and other, and just moving to Africa and going to Africa. I have a link over here for Africa repatriation consultation and relocation support. So for those who are literally just really looking to just make a move, especially those who are not traveling with us and you just want to get things set up and things like that, especially in a country like Ghana where we have all these connections and all these things in place, just reach out and we just you know, just have a simple conversation and then we can just go from there and just put things in place. That way you are prepared again. Everything that we do is based on preparation for our Africa tour experience and also educating ourselves to build future investments and things like that. Uh, that way we just limit the mistakes and limit bad decisions that uh, we make when we tend to this romanticize about traveling or going to Africa. You know, we just have to be, just be realistic as far as just how things move and things like that. Uh, because you know, you don't you don't know what you're getting into unless you just have a whole lot of experience on all the places that we're going to. Uh, so everything we're doing is just kind of help you understand and put those things in clarity so you can just move around in sequence. So let me just go back to the main menu. All right, I'm scrolling down. So these are the other journeys that we have on the uh, schedule. So once uh, we finish up in Ghana, uh, we're gonna head over to Tanzania, November 17th to the 28th. So that is a full 90 day journey. And that includes, that is four days in Arusha three days in Zanzibar Island and two days in Dar es Salaam. So that's a nine day itinerary. And that is this, a journey where you're just moving from, from domestic flights to a ferry boat ride to you know, just driving you know, here and there. It is, it's just well sequenced and organized as far as the flow of the itinerary. So the main thing that could get you clarity about what we're doing is the itinerary. And if you were to just look at a map on, you know, on a big screen and then you saw a movement for the nine days, you'll see that it's moved around in a certain sequence to where we just, you know, the logistics is just well organized and that's based on experience. But these are all journeys that we've done before with exception of uh, Liberia. Yeah. Then we have Ghana back uh, coming up in December. So a lot of people end up just moving to Ghana for December. So we have a very big group scheduled for December. And then we're gonna start off the year with the six uh, African country journey across the five different uh, schedules. So we're gonna start with Senegal and the Gambia. Roots tour, that will be March uh, 
new date would be March 30th to April 30th, April 10th. And then we're gonna get back to Ghana and that is uh, May 24th to June 5th. Then we're gonna head out to Liberia, July 20th to the 29th. So that is a very interesting uh, itinerary, itinerary. So I have us uh, spending about uh, five to six days in Monrovia and then I have us spending about three days out, uh, three, three and a half days out in the countryside and put a lot of research into it and got to know my good brother, uh, Kala Genesis to explain certain things and just piece together just a nice itinerary for Liberia. And this is literally this history in the making uh, itinerary. And also it's focused on investments and things like that. As far as people wanna live there, do business, getting land, uh, doing certain things. So those are the connections and networks we're working to put that together. And that is gonna be that uh, summer uh, journey. Then we're back off to Tanzania in November, November 16th to the 27th. And then we're gonna close out with uh, South Africa, December 24th to January 4th. Uh, so that will be an interesting schedule. So the first uh, four countries are in uh, West Africa and then we close out in East Africa and Southern Africa. Uh, so that is uh, the journey right there, family. Yeah, so. Once you click on the link, all those details are there. Then the last things, thing I have on this uh, link here is for our community called Black Star Pan-African Community. So when you're on a Ghana tour, uh, this is a community that we just literally just invest in, uh, put our money to pay for 15 acres of land and paint on another 60 acres. So we can do uh, community and uh, economic development and get into commercial development and this industries and all the different aspects of this uh, nation building and this building investments uh, dealing with this real estate. Uh, so that is a nice setup. And then when we're on the, the Ghana tour, we do a full tour of the community and of the town and everything. And I have lots of documentation on the website. Uh, once you click on the link and it just opens up to a full flood of details. And then there's a link that say photos and videos and that's gonna just take you to all the documentation of the land. And then the website, uh, self or the web page gives you this all the legal documents that you can look to and process. So those are the things that we have set up as far as Africa for Africans tours and investment. And the next thing uh, that I have and more popular is uh, the YouTube page, uh, youtube.com forward slash Bomani 2007. So the page is set up to where we just uh, show highlights of all of the tours itself. So this is our latest uploads, uh, Bomani on Sanada TV, and that is our interview. Then I have highlights of from our last tour to Tanzania. That's at Rastalan and us driving to, to Rastalan and us giving feedback. And then a few um, videos here on our last few days in Ghana. So those are just whatever is uploaded. And then I have multiple playlists and the multiple playlists that represent all of the tours we have done from 2020 to 2021. And just give, once you click on any of these links, it just highlights from just the beginning to the end of just us showing you what the experience, basically just flowing with what that tenor will have, but giving you this a video version of it so you can visualize on what we're doing. The same thing as the photos when you're on Facebook, and uh, it's just in galleries. Instagram is just more just different photos and things spotted around and just highlighted. But uh, the YouTube playlist and the Facebook uh, playlist literally just give you that full documentation. So along with that itinerary, you'll be able to just get an idea of this, you know, if this is something that you want to do and if you like the flow of this country. And then the highlights are for all different uh, countries that we have traveled to. And once you scroll down some more, uh, you'll see other countries that we've done in the past, Brazil, South Africa, Ethiopia. Uh, it's just lots of uh, details. I spent the last 18 years traveling to Africa and documenting everything. Uh, so I have lots of playlists and the oldest playlist I have is of our journey to uh, Egypt in 2004. And then the latest documentation is from uh, December 2021 and January 2022 uh, journey to Ghana. So that's it, family. There's lots of documentation and details. And 
I have so much uh, videos, it's over 3000 videos. So what I've done is put a lot of them in different playlists and made them relevant to whatever you know, the topic is. And all these videos is, uh, shows all aspects of our experience across many different African countries and you know, this modern day feel um, on this high technology videos um, recorded all the new ones in 4K, very clean. And as time go along, you know, the equipment got better. We just got better equipment. And uh, as the techn technology got better, we just used better technology to this showcase and document everything. So I'm always telling anyone if, you know, once you look through all of this, when you're ready, just give me a call directly and let's talk about it and get you going and get you committed to the journey. And just like all these wonderful energy of people that have traveled before, it's the same world that, you know, you're, you're getting connected into. Um, the only difference is this, uh, you have more information to this uh, connect on and uh, all the schedules virtually just literally just get better because you just adjust them consistently as you just build in a brand uh, for global or Africa tourism and investments. All right. And there's a few other pages I'm on that, that is uh, Instagram. And that is TikTok. And Facebook. And this is a newsletter that was sent out via email. And uh, that was sent out this, uh, to give full detail of this, all of the links for all the journeys that we have, but also just to just give an overview presentation of just uh, 15 uh, plus years of this Africa tours and the showcase in this, a lot of the this tour groups, just let the, everyone know this is what, you know, the group of people look like. They just average people like average working class people like yourself. And they just want to get a taste of Africa and they join us and we just give them the best example of what we have. So these are our last two our groups. All the conference call our details. So I'm always telling anyone, uh, once they get this the information for the conference call, they click on the link, open it up, just scroll down a little bit, and you see the link, um, the ID and the password, and all those things right there. Right, and all of our conference call recordings are posted to this link on YouTube, and that's the playlist for interviews and conference calls and things like that. Uh, presentations basically just to get you prepared or clear about uh, traveling to Africa with us. It's a family and this is my link here for payment options. So once you are ready to go, you can just click on this link and review the payment options. If you wanna do debit card or credit card, it gives you a payment logo inside of this link. And beyond that, other payments are this details and explanation of just what your options are. And then from there, you just communicate and we just work it out. So that's what that is. And then this is a list of our full 2022 slash 2023 schedule. So got all those links are organized from the newsletter and you click on it and just open up to the details. So just like that, just using the modern day technology to this organize information to get you know, people more prepared and clear about traveling to Africa and just being uh, clear about what they're getting into. So you see these famous uh, group pictures the same time when you travel with us, uh, just be ready to take the group pictures and you know, smile. Uh, and this, you know, these are the expressions of this, what they look like. All these historical this footage of, of this, us in Africa, this enjoying paradise. All right, so this is a general topic uh, put together and it's one of those things where 
all these details that you know we have right here is just lots of information. So what I just usually recommend everybody do this, you know, read through it. And when we have conference calls, you know, just ask questions and we just can elaborate more on it. But uh, it's just a lot of general information, which is just based on you clicking on the tour link and just you being prepared based on those details. And one of the highlights on here is uh, school supplies and donations. So we have a few schools in different countries we go to. So usually just recommend if you're packing a bag, um, you're gonna have two 50 pound check bags. So what's recommended is that you can use one of the bags to pack your school supplies or just things you wanna barter, trade or get rid of, um, whichever way you wanna work those things. And that way, when you just get new things, you have an empty bag, you can just put things in. So the school supplies is, you know, that's an encouragement to just bring things and uh, have the extra space ready to, to redecorate your life with more cultural goods, or I should say culture, cultural crafts uh, from Africa. Right, and um, as far as Facebook, I have a group created for all of the tours that we're traveling on. And what I do is just uh, post uh, links, conference calls, updates, videos, pictures, and just kind of just post a few things just to just share details and then just uh, use it as a way to just have the group pages out there so people who have any le level of interest can just join in. They're gonna scroll up and down the page and what they're gonna find is a whole lot of documentation and information. And that's kind of what we're just looking to uh, share. It's hard for people to make uh, these decisions to travel to Africa and do anything in Africa uh, without just having information out there to connect them to. And below this represent this a gallery of all of the tours we have done uh, under Africa for the Africans over the last 15 years. And all the social links right there. Contact details and everything. So always letting people know that all the information is right there. Just reach out and connect with me and I'll get you on these uh, journeys. But that way we don't go into too much and go too long into the call. What I wanna do is just open things up uh, so we can just dialogue more and then see who have any questions. And uh, yes, uh, go from there. But Right there, family, that is right in the middle of our website, africaforafricans.org. As soon as you open the website, that body of information that's gonna kind of go to the slot of the highlights. And if you scroll down, just give you some more general details. And these are also where the links are for all the social pages and also for all of the Facebook groups. And in the same photos that I just showed, uh, this right here take you down all the way down to the same photos. You just get a bigger view from the newsletter uh, on the uh, website. So the best thing to do when you see these photos is picture yourself there in the country and this you know, stay committed and you'll be there. It's just one of those things where we all follow the same procedures and the same guidelines. And you know, now we're you know, logged into history to encourage more of our people to just connect to Africa and take that experience beyond tourism and get into investments and things like that. Even that famous journey uh, to Brazil, July 2017. All right, so 2017, uh, as you can see, marked the year of this multiple journeys and on. But before that, what you, used to, what you see is just like October, annual October journeys. And that's because it takes a whole lot to even do one journey. Um, somehow, based on modern technology, and all those things. And, you know, you just get advanced in business, you're able to do 
all those countries with all those itineraries and you can coordinate the you know, the crews that you have in different countries. But uh, I guess, you know, you have to evolve and step it up. But these were just one journeys. And I remember that being just difficult doing one of those journeys. But uh, I don't know, I guess I've been inspired because we've been in and out of country like nonstop. Uh, so, and this is the foundation that started it right there. December 2006. Um, and so looking forward to year number 16th and the first journey of that of this year for us will be in Ghana in literally nine days or or I should say that it will be set off in Ghana in 10 days. So once uh, we get back, uh, family, we're just gonna upload and share more and more information and more and more highlights and things like that and then get you ready for that nonstop schedule. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing and anyone who have any questions, you can unmute yourself and uh, give your name where you're calling from your question and we can just get into some dialogue. Just wanna share just a general presentation uh, we have lots more information to share, but I don't want to take up all the time by just talking about uh, what you can just kind of review on your own. So let's get into some dialogue. All right, so anyone have any uh, questions? Just uh, unmute yourself. Can you hear me? This is Juma. Uh, greetings, uh, Juma. I can hear you loud and clear. All right, Juma Rafiki from Los Angeles, California. Multiple trip and tour member with the Africa for the African organization. You know, I the last time I had uh, asked you a question about um, this documentation that was talking about the QR code for vaccination. Did you ever figure that out? Uh, no, that's something that's done on the other side uh, there in like Tanzania or Ghana. None of us have those things over here. It's not I, like uh, serious. I can take a shot card but they're not gonna have a QR code on it for scanning, you know? Yeah, let's just bring a card and you're good to go. That's it, that's why I'm good? Uh, yes, and then what we're gonna literally do like a month before, we're gonna reach back out to our, our guides and find out if anything changed. Right, okay. Yeah, Cause you know, like even Ghana just had a travel advisory uh, April 22nd. And that's like literally a month before we, you know, we leave for Ghana. So a few things on there was changed. Right. So a lot of times I just have to keep checking those things. Okay. Any chance we're going to be on one of those big red buses like you have in Ghana? <laughs> we may be in a little, based on how things are going, like we're going to be in a little uh, van. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'm no longer canceling any journeys. Uh, is if I got five people, we just go and we just get a, we just, we just get a minivan. Mm. <laughs> Now, the issue is I have a lot of people want to go to Tanzania um, and the commitments aren't matching the energy, uh, but, you know, we have to finalize on bus size and all that stuff soon. But I've been pushing Tanzania, you know, even rocking all of my Tanzania jersey the last few uh, calls I had um, and just doing our best to show people. And then all of the footage are up on YouTube for Tanzania and it's just great footage. Uh, this, I mean, and it's two back to back here, but. Yeah. And the country that I get most of what uh, most interest in is, on, you know, is Ghana. And that's really it. Other countries are building up little by little, but it's kind of like uh, maybe, maybe 10 to 15 people. Yeah. I'm excited to go to Tanzania. Yeah, but and we're going to make the best of it. Even I'm going to Liberia too next year. So oh, perfect. Perfect. Uh, maybe we get you to, to do some recruiting for some of your good friends at the VA. Well, I mean, I did get all the package that you sent the, uh, yesterday, so I went to uh, the, uh, the Black Conscious uh, community over here in Lamert Park, and I started putting the information out there, and then I'm going to have a box of these printed from Staples, our printing okay. company, and then I'll be able to start putting those out there, too, so I'm just trying to help. Do awesome, man. Do we, do we need to give a military discount or something? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that. It's just been a blessing for me to be able to travel to as many countries thus far that I have with you, you know. Oh, perfect. I can add more if you want to keep on traveling. Well, I mean, you know, listen, um, 
I really want to go to Rwanda, so I don't know. I can make it happen just for you, man. You're one of our special VIPs. You know, I'll design an itinerary just because you want to go specifically. But uh, absolutely, as 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 uh, you know, like I like remember last time you went with me, it was only Ghana we had, right? Right, right. Yeah. So then you see in South Africa, Tanzania, Senegal, the Gambia, Liberia. Yeah. I, I, you know, what I don't understand is why the interest among so many African-Americans with South Africa, when you know that that the apartheid <laughs> regime has just changed shape and you know, I still run that place economically. So, yeah, I'm going there to, you know, to, 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 to take the profits and invest in our black star community there in Ghana. So yeah. it's yeah. it's all good. Now. But, you know, people have that interest and you're like, OK, well, and if you want to go, we'll go there because, uh, you know, we've been there. We have a good idea. But, you know, you know me, I'm, I'm one of the people who always recommend, like, West Africa. Everybody's in the background. All right, person, perfect. I mean that person. I'm one of the people that will always recommend, like, um, you know, West Africa um, because it just give you, I think it just give you the more realistic reconnection energy and this real life of this Africa. Oh. No, I agree with you. I think that that um, that ought to be a rite of passage for any African Americans from the diaspora, from the United States, or anywhere over here. That should be a rite of passage in order to go there first, because the slave castles are on the itinerary. You know what I mean? And so, if you really want to get an introduction back to the motherland, you need to go to visit those slave castles first. You know what I mean? Absolutely, and, and most of them are right there in West Africa. So, right. uh, and then, you know, so I'm just trying to show different parts of Africa because the whole continent is incredible. But yeah, some folks, some of our people love South Africa for many different reasons. And right. just like, you know, I have some people that they just want to go to Egypt and that's it, like right. Egypt and Ethiopia, uh, we, we, you know, which is fine. But, you know, you, um, you're pushing like West Africa. West Africa will always be represented as like the blackest part of the entire planet. Exactly. It's, uh, you know, if you, you know, and uh, you look at the different um, regions of Africa, look at the northern, east, and the southern part of Africa, and, you know, yeah. uh, so, and then even more important, uh, that's where you have this abundance of fertile land. I mean, get land, build an empire. Right. Uh, and then, you know, it's, uh, the weather is perfect, very stable, 70, 90 degrees, lots of rain. No hurricane storms, any of that crazy stuff. You're good to go, very stable. You know, we just gotta bring the energy to rebuild the infrastructure. It's just really funny that in order to really actually feel really, really free as a black as a black person in, on this planet, Africa's the only place that only gives you that that feeling. You know, they just had another mass shooting out here where they shot 10 black people. This one white boy killed, he killed, um, he, he, he came into the black side of town. I think it's, uh, I forgot what city it is. He shot 10 blacks, went to the grocery store, you know, and killed like six or some, or 10 of them, I think. Wow. Just because they were black. You haven't heard about it? It's all over the news. Yeah, I'm, I'm in my own world as I'm getting ready to go to Africa with our group and trying to focus on that. Uh, maybe it's a clip that I saw that I was wondering what it was um, when the person aimed at a white man and didn't shoot him. Yeah, no. That's the same clip? They, they took him alive. Probably took him to McDonald's too. Yeah, I don't know. Wow. Yeah, it's, um, yeah so that's what we're building, brother. Uh, family, just uh, open things up to our connection in Africa so we can just build our own empire and our own energy and just build our own just, you know, paradise of peace and everything. And protection and make things work for ourselves. So that's, you know, that's where I look at it. Um, but yeah, n not everybody is gonna be able to leave America. So you know, something else has to be figured out. Yeah. You know, as far as that aspect of things. Yeah, the sad part is that the, it seems like the majority of our people aren't even interested in it. You know, they're still trying to hold out for the, the hope of uh, some <laughs> type of change. utopia here in the United States. Yeah, they don't understand the United States wasn't created for them, you know. Yeah, that's like the things that we're talking about doing in Africa is just not set up for where you know where 
it's open for you to you know to do the things you know do those things it's just not the environment the example um you know the, all these ways of discrimination is like now if someone would, would tell me that hey you can't build a black town or a black city you know, you know and things like that and then and try to flip those things against you and say you're being racist you're being you're discriminating and things like that and you know, it'd be just that, that level of foolishness. Next thing you know, you got people protesting you and things like that because you're trying to be self reliant and self sufficient and you know, doing group economics. So it's uh, interesting, brother. It's interesting. And um, that's uh, I just think more of us should focus on what we're going to do for ourselves and put ourselves in a better position, whether it's what we're going to do here or somewhere else. So this is what I got for us as far as us connecting to Africa and anyone who want to live in this getaway and never return back to, you know, the, the, uh, you know these United Snakes. United so Snakes. Work it out for them. Right, the United Snakes of America. Yeah, we can work it out for them. Uh, that's what we do. We specialize in international business. Right. Get you set up and get you going. This, you know, you just gotta have an organized game plan and be ready. Well, I'm not gonna take up any more of you guys' time. Anybody else got questions? Yes, we well, appreciate you. So, family, um, just unmute yourself and um, give your name, where you're calling from, and what journey you're traveling on, and your question. Hello. Is on mute. Good evening. This is Denise Collins from Alexandria, Virginia. How are you doing, Brother Babani? All right, greetings, are Denise. I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, good. Thank you. I was driving. And I just, just got into the house and now try to turn on the computer as soon as I jump on the computer instead of the phone. But my question is related to the dog. How would be an opportunity to meet with other people who might need a roommate on your tours? Is there any forum in that, in your website anywhere? No, there's no forum. It's just something I communicate about. We just pair people up based on gender and age. And then based Okay, so you do that. Okay, good. You, you, you handle that? Uh, yes, it's a simple thing to do. Most people, okay, good. Most people are coming as individuals. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I thought it, was, it looked like most couples when I look at the website, so I couldn't really tell. Um, yeah, so that'd us, be good. This is us taking pictures. Okay. So none, well, you do a great picture. Uh, very organized. Family. Yeah, none of the people know each other. <laughs> okay. Just to get to know each other over a period of time. Thank you. All right, well, perfect. All right, so family, this, um, all right, uh, Marla, it looked like your line is open. Hi, everybody. Greetings. <laughs> Greetings. I was just going to ask, um, so what is the um, amount of people going on each trip so far? Oh, yes, yeah, some of these trips are have one person, some of them have 25 people so it's uh depends on the, and some of these trips are also a year and a half to uh two almost two years away so yeah it's um uh, all the trips that are our go and and we have also people on standby but uh on average the journeys we have because that's the best i can give you is the average uh numbers um the average historical numbers we have um it's been about 25 people on each journey but since uh, this COVID-19 era has been average about 15 people. Okay. What are you crying about? And then yeah, even yeah. journeys that we have several people. What? Uh, we're making it work because uh, we're doing other business also. So it just uh, all depends. But um, the smallest group that we've ever had is uh, eight and the largest is uh, 43. Yeah. Can you take a question for me? Uh, sure. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, man. Um, what's the what's the average price for the trip? Um, the lowest uh, tour price is three thousand eight hundred, and the highest is uh, four thousand. The four thousand one is for uh, Ghana in December, oh. South Africa in December, and the other countries are three thousand eight hundred. Yeah, I'm interested in Ghana, really. Um, um, we have Ghana yeah, I mean, next year, yeah. September this year. Next year, all right. The documentations for, for Ghana, for Ghana. In terms of visa, I, I live, I'm Lasana, and I live in um, uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. Right. And um, 
the the Ghanaian embassy is in uh, Washington DC, I think. Uh, yes, so you, you submit your papers online and then you send it out to them. Oh, online? Uh, yes, okay. they have online application. Okay, how, how about landing in Ghana? Because I'm, I'm really interested in going home, you know? But I'm That's saving up the money and doing all that kind of stuff. We use the tour as a we use the tour as a introduction and um, basically just as a way to show people information like that business conference and uh, and also land. But we have a full community, Black Star Pan African community that you just build. And outside of outside of that, if someone wants a separate five ten acres or something like that in that same town where we have the same people that uh, control the land, uh, we can work that out for you. And it's just based on established relationship and what we have. So you can do that, um, and what we recommend, uh, you can just always get a plot of land in our 15 or 60 acre community and just build up and um, get your paperwork and things like that. So those are things that we just have set up for someone who just wanna live and do business in Africa to, right. this, to this experience. But um, it's, uh, it's a whole lot to process from, you know, so it's, that's why we have the tour and then we have the preparation to just get you ready. Uh-huh. Um... What's it, what's, um, is it difficult? Is that, it's not difficult to get land there, is it? As you were saying yeah. earlier that the land in West Africa is fertile. Yeah, getting land in, um, is a nightmare. Uh, just, uh, <laughs> and I've um, surprised, uh, I don't have, I'm surprised I'm not aging by now, uh, but it's, uh, it's just based on your tactics. Uh, that's, I just come from a military tactical perspective as far as just how to handle things in this, you know, this, and also the street-minded, you know, you have to kind of be a little bit of everything to just get things worked out in Africa. But that's based things on our relationship that we have. And I use most of the people that I had established with to work things out legally, and then to also help do the research on the land and things like that. So the area that we, we're doing business in, that's the area that we just, you know, we're clear about the land based on legal perspective and things like that. But beyond that, uh, it's a um, very tricky situation. You'd have to just the, what I always recommend is someone just spend the money on a lawyer, an attorney, and also a consultant. Uh huh. What's what's the average price for those plots that you talk about, like fifty acres? Uh, for a plot of land, it's at uh, three thousand five hundred, and that's a like for like for fifty fifty acres. No, for a plot of land for a quarter of an acre. Quarter of an acre. Yes. How much you say? Uh, th uh three thousand five hundred. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, man. I appreciate what you're doing, and um, I am building up because my head is already in Ghana. <laughs> I'm doing a little research and stuff like that, but I, I want to go there and and, and 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 move around and find the best place to live because I want to find somewhere to live, set up my headquarters, and and you get land and set up my headquarters there. Because I don't see, I don't see, I see Africa as the future, really. You know, future for living, especially for black people. It's going to be the future. Every, everybody is trying to get into Africa under the quiet because they know that Africa already have all the resources and Africa is the future in terms of a more um, amicable living. So thank you, man. Yes, sir, brother. I appreciate you. And, uh, you know, we'll keep in touch. And then you can just always just give me a, a call separate and we can just always put together a good game plan and work out things in detail for you. Yeah. Because a quarter acre wouldn't work for me. Yeah. I have to plan like for more. Two, three acres, we can just work those out. And then the numbers get better based on yeah. the acreage. And that's one thing that they do have in that area, just lots of land is just many people just don't know about that area. People, you know, people usually drive by that area, but you just have to go on the, you know, on the, on the lookout. Uh, so, and that area is also developing. So within the next five years, the prices and everything is just gonna go up because they run out of places to develop around Accra. And you know, this is- the, the, No, I don't wanna go Accra. I wanna, I wanna, stay, I wanna go more off grid. You know, I'm, I'm really into the off grid. I just wanna know I have water. 
and good fertile land and a road to get where I want to go. But I'm interested in in the in the um, off the grid kind of reality. And that's what we're looking. That's what we're doing. So it's two hours away. So to give you a good amount of time away, but uh, also um, over the period of time, um, the city is going to be expanding. So. Uh, the people are going to be coming in that direction where we are. And then we're right yeah. there by the beach and then you're right there by you know, freshwater lake. So you have all the elements of just paradise to be around. You just have to develop it. Like people ask me about hospitals. They ask me about certain things. I tell them, I was like, if you want all those nice things, go live in the city because that's where they have it established. Now, if you want to be in a rural area, you have to be willing to build it and develop it and work together. I'm interested, I'm, I'm interested in river, man. <laughs> river and land. River. You know, so I'm interested in being out there and just to a good four-wheel drive vehicle and build, build my place out there, build a house and stuff like that. That's what, I, that's what I'm interested in. And that's what we're doing now. So that, that is perfect. So yeah, we have a lot of good things to talk about because uh, we literally just have people building their houses and we just that's the business that we're into now more than anything else. It's real estate development and just getting into where you can just get land and put your money together and build you know, warehouse factories, get into industries. And all those good things are, you know, it's, it's kind of like you just go to a country and you see all these Chinese, Lebanese, and Indians, and you're like, why are they doing all these things that we should be doing? But that's you know, what it is. They're going to be doing it unless we just you know, compete. All right. One other quick question. How is um, um, solar power equipment out there? Okay, as I say, I'm interested in being off the grid, so I'm not interested in, in hooking up to the public, the yeah, there's no, we don't have any electrical wires or any pipes anywhere. So I tell people, that's the one thing, main thing I tell people is like, the, um, that, that life is not there because you, because the worst thing in Ghana is that you pay all that money for, you know, for electrical poles and then pay for, for pipes and everything to come to your, your community. And then next thing you know, you're getting rationed water and rationed power. So that no, 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 that's why. Right. So that's why we have everything sustainable where you build your own water system and you build your own power system. So what I usually recommend is that, Anyone that's coming from America, just put the stuff in your shipping container, order the, order the, order the package uh, of things that you want, and then get it sent there. Uh, can you get those things in Ghana? Absolutely. But you know, you know when, they, when, uh, these, when these uh, Chinese uh, companies build certain things, they send the best stuff to America and they send the worst to Africa. You know how it goes. Yeah, 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 as, as you <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dirty stuff. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, man. Absolutely, brother. I'll, um, I'll be in touch. Perfect. I'll look out for your call. Okay. All right. Greetings, uh, Denise. Uh, you look excited. You like you're ready to travel with us. Like we're ready to get you locked in. Like yeah, good evening. Good evening. Yes, I am ready. I'm, I'm thinking about that Tanzania tour for next uh, next year. I'm getting ready to go to Panama next uh, two weeks for a little while. But then uh, I'm considering that Tanzania. You're talking about next year, like 2023? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, excellent. Yes. Good time Thank you. prepared. Yes, exactly. And if you change your mind, you can join join me and Juma. Uh, we're leaving in a few months. It's not off the radar. It's definitely it's consideration. It's just <laughs> I have a couple of places I'm trying to go before then, but it's not off the radar. Trust me. That is perfect. That is perfect. So Tanzania. Uh, let me know if you have any specific questions about Tanzania or just anything else you want to talk about. You, what, sorry, I'm butting a little. Uh, what about vehicle, motor vehicle? Oh, you can buy you, you can buy one of the vehicles made in Ghana, from the Ghana manufacturers. Right, right. Yeah, cool man. You can't take a Cadillac though. You might want to take an all-terrain vehicle. Yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah, man. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, because because of the roads there. Yeah, right. I'm no. anticipating. I want to live in the bush, you know, so <laughs> I can negotiate. Four wheel drive will get you through that, that monsoon season. Yeah. So, you from Jamaica, brother? Are you from Jamaica? Yeah, man. Oh, okay. And, uh, and uh, Romani's from Haiti, right? <laughs> no, from Kingston, Jamaica. Well, both of you from Jamaica. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, you make it my favorite country in the world. Yeah. Nice. Yes, and representing Tanzania tonight. All right. So you get your house out there in the bush and you can grow all the ganja you want. Huh? 
Oh my God. Actually, actually, I'm, yeah. Well, I'm just interested in in personal stash. But I'm a I'm a musician. I'm a musician. I'm a filmmaker, and um, um, I'm a songwriter and producer. So that's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in setting up my headquarters out there, and perhaps, not perhaps, but perhaps do some teaching in the colleges and that kind of stuff. You know, uh, when you get out there, Steve Coakley Jr. would be a good person for you to network with because he built he built a black think tank out there in Ghana too. A black what? Black think tank. Oh, oh. yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's operating on solar power, and he's not far from um, the from the Cape. See, see, you know you know about black Steve Coakley Jr. right? No, so if you if you can pass that information to me, that would be nice. Oh no, just Google it. What's his name again? Sorry, Steve Coakley Jr. Steve Coakley Jr. Cool. Well, appreciate that, man. Yeah, he sells herbs too. I buy his herbs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, how, but by the way, how is marijuana in Ghana? How is the law? Yeah, but man, you might want to answer that question. No, yeah, that's, I can't say I know yeah. the law like that because I don't honestly. Uh, they you don't, don't know. know. But as far as um, hemp production, H uh, E M P, um, people have been talking about that uh, in Africa as far as uh, those productions going on. So, uh, it's, if it's not clear, it's uh, on or in that direction. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm watching the. I'm watching the. The. The all Africa um, plan that they have so that you can travel more freely across Africa. Forget what that lady name. She sent me some, some stuff sometimes. But I'm, I'm watching that because we want Africa to, to be free so we can trade and travel and, and that kind of stuff. And all, and all this COVID business, all this COVID foolishness. Africa for just leave that behind, man, and stop putting that in the way of people like us who want to travel. Because we know all of that was a hoax. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm not taking no fucking vaccination from none of them. Yeah, the, the requirement so that, is a COVID-19 uh, uh, test, so uh, there's no... Ghana, Ghana at one point was just... That, that was the only option. Either you had a vaccination card or you just didn't go to the country. So that's... Um, that, you have to vaccinate. That's that's been adjusted. To, no, they give you incentive for it to wait up, take a COVID test. But uh, the but uh, all the countries that we have on itinerary, that's what you have to have. You have to have a COVID test at minimum to get into the country. Uh, so, there, you're, so you're, you're saying so you're saying you don't have to have that to go to Ghana. No, you don't have to. It, it's not a mandatory situation now. Uh, okay, and, that makes sense. Uh, that's that makes that's sense. based on the April twenty second travel advisory. Uh, yeah, so the thing that we have to you know, read through before we just do so many journeys. So, um, it was something they had in place for a few months, uh, and they just adjusted. So that should open things up a little bit better for the summertime. Yeah, man, Ghana, Ghana must lead the way. You know, Ghana for lead the way in all these um, politics and these hindrances because America and all these countries putting up hindrances for people like us to go back to Africa you know, because they still want to keep us as slaves. You, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, yes. Me personally, I want to go back. I want to live the rest of my life in, in Africa. Yeah. Yeah. They're still trying to spread their influence on the, on the African continent too. Yeah, and they, they, they will continue to do that, but it's time the African leaders get control of them own destiny and, and stop being puppeteers of, of, of this system. Right. You know? And that's what that's what we we I, I think that's what we as 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 people of the diaspora would like. We would like to be able to go back to our country and contribute. I have lots of skills, you know. As I say, I'm a musician, I'm a filmmaker, I am a poet, singer, songwriter, and I have a lot I can contribute to Africa and I want to, you know, so. Yep. Yeah. Excuse me, Bomani, I have a question. What about re 
country back into the United States. Do we have to have a COVID test to re-enter? I haven't had a chance to check on the website yet about that. Uh, yes, uh, so we have to take a COVID test on the re-entry. So it's set up to where you, you uh, two days before we travel, before we leave, we just usually just go somewhere where we just can get a one day result and then we, we're, we're prepared for our travel. Uh, so that's uh, what we've been doing on all of the six uh, journeys that I've taken between 2020 and 2021 during the COVID protocol era. Okay, thank you. So they'll just give you a printout that you present to America when you come back to the States? Uh, yes, and we'll go and take it as a group. Okay, cool. Thank that's, you. A, that's a good question. Thank you for that one. Sure. We have things um, organized uh, to make it work. Uh, you know, because you're, and you know, that's and that's the purpose of just having your crew on the ground and just having things logistically organized. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we do. We specialize in the organized journeys to where we help you with all the preparations and everything that you need to know from passports to this entry, and then we just make it work. How about malaria? Uh, so malaria, um, some people take malaria pills, some people don't. I've never taken any of those things, and some people have uh, the vaccination. Yeah. Uh, the vaccination is not mandatory, uh, more so recommended, but the hardest thing is some people don't have a yellow fever and it's just hard to find it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, took the, uh, I took, when 2019, I took the, uh, I took the shot for, through my, um, my provider. That was my choice uh, for, mm -hmm. for malaria. Um, but when I went to Ghana, I think I only got bit twice. Um, and Bomani and I have a friend, his name is uh, Kiri Obiawadu. He went to um, Kenya, he caught malaria. Now he's a holistic health practitioner and he got extremely sick. He had to go to the hospital. And this guy has been a 40 year practitioner of uh, veganism, right? Mm -hmm. So he knows about all the herbs and everything. He probably has uh, one of the, the, the highest grade immune systems of, of, of any practitioner in that wellness community. But even he got uh, extremely sick and had to go to the hospital. So and I'm not trying to scare anybody, but it is it's something to, to consider when you do go there. Yeah. You know, I took it, I didn't get it, it didn't hurt me. You know, I mean, some people take uh, mosquito repellents mm -hmm. with them, neem oil and things like that. Yeah. yeah but. Uh, do, do you guys know that malaria was not in Africa? Malaria was only in England, you know? No, we didn't. Ma malaria was not in Africa. So it's, so I my, my conclusion about it is that malaria is really uh, uh, a germ warfare that they brought into Africa. Oh, like yes. In Africa. It doesn't surprise me because they're, they've already got plans um, through different foundations to do genetic um, warfare against the African people on the planet. So yeah, no. like ticks, like ticks here in 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 America, even in America here, ticks is a is a biological thing too. Yeah, what biological warfare. Yeah, I mean when you look at those people, Lyme's, Lyme's disease. Yeah, I don't know when you look at those people. I'm just like you know I don't know if there is a devil, you can't get no closer than that. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, perfect. I appreciate it. So the, the goal is, um, as far as uh, that situation, as far as malaria, if you have the yellow fever card, then bring it. And if not, then we just get it uh, worked out. Um, but um, I don't recall that, that being a requirement for many uh, countries. Mm -hmm. There's no such requirement for Tanzania either. Yeah. So th So... Let me see who else we have on here. So family, anybody else have any questions um, or want to talk about anything? Bomani, I'm out. All right, uh, Juma, I appreciate you, brother. And uh, we'll keep in touch. You take care. And uh, Yeah, yeah I, a, good, a good thing about you, your trip there, what you were saying earlier, that for a person like me who wants to really do more research on Ghana, coming on your trip, it's good that I could stay over for days after the trip in Ghana and do some traveling around, rent a car and travel around, look at the land, because I really want to look at a good place to live. I, know, I, I hear that the second city in Ghana, I forget what its name is. Uh, Cape is a, 
is a good place. It's, it's more inland from oh, from really Accra. Yeah. That's so perfect. So that's the, the, the situation. You know, the tours are 10 days and you know, if you want to stay two weeks longer and then, you know, we do our best to connect you with people and then you just make your own accommodations, whether you want to right. rent a house or whether you just want to do certain things. And move around. Just, you know, just, you know, because since you're in Africa and if you're looking to do certain things, just instead of spending money on another ticket to come back, just use that time and just... Right, right. That's my idea of a plan. That's my... And, I, and I'm... And I'm thankful that you guys will accommodate that idea. Oh, uh, yes. You know, um, you have to, the tour is an introduction, but if you're looking to live in a country and do business, you, you're going to need to spend time around and, yeah. do, and do certain things to get a feel of the country. But if not, then, you know, just come on a tour, enjoy a tour, and then, you know, and make your way back. Uh, but right. The, and the, the good thing about the land, you know, we have a real estate office that we have set up there, and then we have people that could walk into the land. And then uh, we have an arrangement that, that could be made between the chief and maybe our attorney uh, or and survey if somebody wants, maybe they want five acres of land somewhere different or, and things like that. Just trying to just find ways to help people work things out where they don't have to deal with land drama and things like that by using people yeah. that we have established and people that's about the business. And land, land isn't sold in, in Ghana, right? You, you, have, you lease it for 99 years or something like that. Uh, yes, it's a 99 year lease. Yeah. Blessed love, my brother. Keep up yeah, the absolutely, work. Absolutely appreciate you. Uh, Marla, you're, you're looking and you're smiling. Do you have any questions before we close? All right, uh, Kuvi, anyone have any questions? Teresa, Denise? You know what? I have to. Um, I'll get some questions to you. Hey, Teresa. When I'm alone, because right now I have my grandkids. <laughs> Okay, you can reach out to me when you're ready. Yeah, I'll contact you. My grandson is crying right now. So. All right, well, that's perfect. All right, uh, well, family, appreciate everybody. Um, once again, family. This Thanks, Bamani. Thank you. Peace yes, and blessings. Uh, Safe journey. Absolutely. I appreciate you, and I'm um, looking forward to that journey with us, and um, just... Looking for some, uh, looking for some recruit, looking for someone to help us recruit some people for Senegal and the Gambia. But we're going okay. regardless, whatever we have outside. Right now, it's six of us. All right. Uh, and uh, we're gonna, we have time. <laughs> yes, this is true. Give thanks. All right. Well, perfect. All right, so family, I'll take care. Good night. Yeah, that's the journey continues. Go ahead. Good night. Thank you. Have a wonderful trip. All right, you take care. And then if anybody needs to directly, you can just call me directly just anytime after the call uh, or just throughout the week and uh, we'll talk. So take care, family. Bless and love. Take care. Good night. Uh, good night.